This is Twit. Yeah, we just finished talking about Android 12 <laughs> QPR3 last week, and this week we got Android 13 Beta 3 can't for you drop in straight. on June 13. I can't it's keep like it one, all. Two, I, I mean, three. I. Ah. One, two, three, A, B, throw in some letters in there, yeah. and then hope that, you know, eventually you get it on your phone. And yeah, June 13th, you got your Android 13 Beta 3. So if you are already enrolled and looking for those sweet over the air updates, or if you're kind of looking to get into your Android 13, into the Android 13 Beta game, you can certainly enroll now and you will get that Android 13, which is now uh, with Beta beta 2, wait, sorry, Beta 3. Good, good Lord. See, I'm already confused. With Beta 3, Android 13 is now at platform stability, which means all app-facing APIs and behaviors are final, which is great for me. Uh, and devs don't like it when you rug pull our APIs out from under us. So that makes it easier for devs to kind of start kind of finalizing support for it. And kind of interestingly enough, uh, you know, um, you might, y'all might not have noticed, but Google seems to be kind of hot on tablets this year. Just, I don't know if you kind of noticed, maybe like yeah, you heard maybe something. Maybe a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Um, you can actually get Android 13 Beta 3 on tablets, some tablets actually. If you check out the Android 13 Beta Testing Partners page, you can check out whether if you have a Lenovo or some other tablet, whether you want to get your Android 13 Beta 3 on that, uh, check it out because you might be able to. Nice. And they have a, a lot of partners things. on the on the they, beta they page. They do now. actually. I was quite it's surprised. It kept going. I was like scrolling and scrolling, and it kept going. So yeah, if if you are excited about large screens as much as Google is, you go ahead and check out that partners page and see if you can get on it. Um, and what do you get to get in on? Well, number one is now predictive back animations is now in the developer options. We talked about this around I/O time, but basically. Google is trying to make it easier for folks to tell where the back button is going, at least in some situations, particularly when you're going home. So for us devs, this is actually pretty important because back uh, back and back navigation is kind of hard. We've done some janky stuff, uh, myself very much included. And so basically Android or Google rather is giving us Android 13 to figure stuff out. And then by 14, they're just going to break our stuff, which is fine because that's kind of honestly how you kind of need to get us to do stuff like this. So if you're a developer or if you're just a user point, I want to see what the future of back navigation looks like. You can now access the predictive back animations via the developer options in your settings uh, for devs. Again, you have two routes. If you're, well, I guess three, but really two. If you're supporting Android X, which is the modern compatibility library, there is an Android X library that you need to be implementing. If you're not on Android X and you really don't care about previous versions of Android, probably some of you out there, uh, you don't have to worry about that. There is a modern uh, API for that. And I guess the third option is just not to do anything and then your back navigation breaks. So that's also an option. So yeah, we got 13 to play around and to get it working. And hopefully by 14, maybe everyone will see something new and different for back navigation. Hopefully good stuff, uh, maybe some broke stuff, but yeah, we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious, like, I mean, this this seems to be very specific to gesture nav. I, I guess like if you're a three button navigation user, you're, you're just going to miss out on all the fancy predictive back navigation. Is, is it isolated to just uh, gesture I, nav or is the, or is the action tied to like, you know, the, the swiping from the side gesture nav should mirror the function of the back button if you choose the three button display. I, I would imagine on the yeah. on the OS side of things, right? Yeah. But can yeah, the so can so, the yeah. app override that? Yeah. Well, I don't I don't think that matters. I'm kind of curious because like the whole thing is like the the point of predictive back animation is that as you're like pulling, it kind of is like oh you're you're kind of doing a back thing. Let me, for example, if you're gonna kick, kick out the home, it'll going like to. show you. But if you know, but that's like a gesture. So there's kind of like, you know, intermediary, like, there's, you know, there's, there's like a middle bit to like yeah. a gesture, but with a button, it's just a click. So I, I, I mean, I, I think regardless, you need to support this um, and, and like, you know, the the brokenness or not brokenness of your navigation will be affected by this. But I, I guess just like this kind of like the predictive part, I wonder if that's just but, not a but thing three for button the button. nav is, is all virtual now, pretty much. I mean, no phone has three buttons. They're lucky if they have one. I don't know. Well, I kind of, yeah, I, I kind of still use yeah. it for a while when I was like protesting. And, and actually, I, I, mean, I, stuck with, I stuck with it for a while. I stuck with it for a very long time. It's yeah. still an option. I mean, the the, the point yeah. is it's like option, it's yeah. still in there. If someone chooses to do the three button, like my wife, she hates the gestures, and so she always opts I, for I'm the three, three button. button. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, it's it's still there. 
I activated the uh, the setting that you were talking about, but it's not really doing anything when I do my my back nap. I will say, have you been running? Um, when have you been running uh, the betas that have implemented some form of this predictive back nav? At no, all? I should have. I should be. Um, I've kind of like been. Um telling my team we need to do this we need to do this but we haven't quite gotten there yet we yeah we haven't quite gotten there yet i i really should though for for a team of your size are, do you wait for like this uh what do they call this platform stability point uh in yeah. order to do that yeah i think most teams do just because again like when apis change so like basically it's literally like the names of things and the way that you call things i mean i think everyone's going to be working up until the end to fix like behavioral stuff but when it comes to like api changes we don't really want to deal with that and most of the time we get like a set amount of time to it's necessary time but but you know we don't have a lot of time to do stuff like this so we try to wait to the last minute till everything's kind of set in stone and then it makes us not have to like you know, dance around the changes as much. Yeah. So yeah, for our team of our size, we usually wait until it's until probably this point. Platform stability is probably is pretty much what we're gonna be waiting for. And then we'll probably start having folks turn on or rather install the beta on their on, on some phone. Hopefully I mean a couple of people always put it on their daily drivers and then see what happens. Um the the actual back navigation, so because it's not breaking in 13 you probably, I, I'd, I'd hazard to say that there's a good number of apps that won't be looking all, you know, sexy and predictive backy yet. Yeah, that's true. It's, that's true. Good point. Yeah. So um, by next year, I think I would anticipate seeing a lot more, uh, it, it would be easier to take a survey, like maybe next year of what it looks like for folks, because I think that's when the feet are going to be to the fire and you really have to do this. So yeah. I don't know. I will install it and let y'all know, but I don't, uh, it's kind of, um, Yeah. I, I guess can think of that one case with the home with going to home where it's really really interesting, and then yeah I don't know I have to look at the API I will report back to y'all when we decide to to actually support things so yes I mean um, I've just noticed I can't really quite put my finger on exactly what the behavior is or exactly what's going on but I mean okay obviously this changes how back how the back button uh, operates right like. They're, mm -hmm. they're implementing some sort of a change to the back button. And there are times where I'm in an app and I would say the back button should be taking me to a different part of the app, but instead it mm -hmm. still takes me home or vice versa. Yeah. It should be taking me home or, you know what I mean? It's, 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 mm -hmm. I'm still very confused as far as what it's actually doing, but I have noticed a change and it's not a change that I notice all the time. So, uh, often the back button does what I expect it to, but sometimes mm -hmm. it does something that's very bizarre and that could be just be early release bugs and everything that they're working out. But I'll be curious to see how this operates when um, when it's like here's here's the release candidate. Um, we've got all the all the things figured out on on this predictive you know uh, scenario. But yeah, there are a couple of times where I've been like, no, that's not at all what I wanted, and I'm surprised <laughs> that that's what you think I wanted. You know, when I think of predictive behavior. You know, it, like we talked about in the show in the past, it's it's trying to understand what exactly we expect or what the developer mm -hmm. expects should happen when you hit the back button. And right now, I wouldn't say that it's hitting 100 percent, you know, it's probably more like yeah. 75. I would still say the majority of the blame when you get confused is probably as a dev developer. I'm going to say the majority of the, of the issue is going to be us. And I think that um, switching over to a new API is could could make things better, but it could also just be, I'm going to make this so that my app roughly works. So it's, it might just be like marginally better, but yeah, if, if you continue to have problems, I would, I, I, I would say like very likely it's, it's still a dev problem, um, mm. just to own up to that. So, okay, so I'll just I blame mean, the developers. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, to, to be that that's that's kind of what it is. Like, I mean, it's our responsibility if we don't adapt if we don't adopt predictive back navigation and it, and especially if we adopt it well. You know what I mean? Like right. I think sometimes like and I man, it's just sometimes like when you're in such a, certain situations, it, I've had so many weird conversations over the years with different teams about what should the back button do? And it's weird how many how many different opinions you can get. Um, I guess it also depends on the complexity of your app and like how things are structured and, and like how you move from like screen to screen. Yeah. It is really weird sometimes when you when when you have people on the same team writing the same app and they don't agree on what back should do. And uh, yeah, that happens. That that's I mean that's why I kind of want to take a lot of responsibility here as a dev that you know um, I, I really just do feel feel like Google is kind of just making us all change to something and hopefully 
uh, some things will be better. Um, yeah. Like, like knowing that you're going home. If you're using gesture, I don't know how it's going to work for, I don't know how it's going to work for three buttons. So 